Today I'm taking a look at the new Forza Motorsport game and digging into what the in-game effects of changing the graphics settings are. This video is best viewed at 4K resolution as some of the items in the game might be a bit difficult to distinguish if you're running at a lower resolution. There's a few settings that I'm pretty sure are bugged right now, but I'll go into those more when I get to them. All the recordings and testing were done on two different computers using a 3080 Ti and a 4090 GPU. If you find this video helpful, feel free to hit like, subscribe and leave a comment. Even if it's just to say thanks. I do read all the comments, even if I can't always reply to everyone. Also, if there's any mistakes, feel free to correct me on anything, or if you have any inputs, please add them to the comments to help everyone. Some settings require a track reload, and you can't just choose restart track. You have to end the race and then restart a whole new race for it to take effect. This also appears to be a little bugged at this time, and sometimes settings don't change even when I restart the race, so I reverted to always just restarting the game in full. Let's go through the basic settings first. These first few settings are a little confusing, but I'll do my best to explain what I found. Dynamic render quality and dynamic optimization are basically a linked setting, but I'll talk about that shortly when we look at advanced video because it's really related to those settings. Full screen just tells the game to run in full screen or windowed mode. Resolution sets the screen resolution the game will be rendered at. You should set this to your monitor's maximum resolution. If you want to run at a lower resolution than your monitor's maximum, we'll do that in advanced video and I'll explain how this works when we get there. Show frame rate enables a live FPS display in game. Image modifiers is where you can turn on Nvidia DLSS and FSR if you have AMD hardware. Note, I didn't use DLSS at all in this testing. I don't use any kind of DLSS and I feel like if I was going to test these settings, I'd need to create a full video just on the differences between all the DLSS options. Onto the advanced video options. The first option we can change here in advanced is the dynamic render quality. This is the exact same thing as dynamic render quality in the basic settings screen. It's kind of confusing having in two spots, but just be aware it's the exact same thing in both locations and changing it in basic also changes it in advanced. So let's jump back to the basic settings and explain dynamic render quality and dynamic optimization. This game has a lot of automatic options where it tries to adjust things on the fly to achieve a certain performance. Which I personally don't like because you're allowing the game to change visual quality as it determines it should. To keep up the FPS. This video is about the complete opposite. So we'll disable all the auto settings from here out. First of all you have to set dynamic optimization. It's either default or custom. It should really be called on or off because that's what it is, but that would be too easy to name it that. Default equals on and custom equals off. Just remember that. What it does is it tells the game to use auto graphics settings, which is the setting named default, or manual graphics settings, which is the setting named custom. The difference being that auto graphics settings will use the profile levels that you set in dynamic render quality setting and the manual graphics settings will let you set all of the different levels per setting manually. But this video is for people who want to tweak their visuals manually. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to set dynamic optimization to custom and leave it on this. And you can ignore what's in dynamic render quality. All that out of the way, let's move on and jump back to the advanced video section. Performance target. This is what refresh rate you want the game to run at. And this setting links into the auto mode stuff I spoke about. I don't want to use auto mode, but for me, I do want to cap the game at 60 FPS as that's my 4K monitor refresh rate. Unlocked V-Sync is really the simple option here and let your monitor refresh rate control the maximum FPS. Resolution scale. What this setting does is it tells the game what percentage of the resolution you set in basic settings should it render all the 3D at. And isotropic filtering. There's five options, off, 2x, 4x, 8x, and 16x. This setting affects the quality of textures as you see them into the distance. That's the short version. I've only compared the settings off and at the higher setting so it makes the difference more pronounced. Look at the white starting line and follow the road forwards. You can see a much clearer stone surface. Further in the distance on 16x than you can when it's off. It doesn't just apply to road surfaces. It's a way to filter textures to look better when they're on objects that aren't perpendicular or flat in front of you, like looking at a head on wall. I'd recommend setting this to at least 4x because it really does make textures look better than when it's off. Ray tracing quality. There's four options, 
off car reflections, car reflections plus RTAO, and full reflections plus RTAO. Also, if you use either of the RTAO options here, then the next setting, RTAO quality, is also enabled, and you can set a quality level for RTAO of low, medium, high, or ultra. Ray tracing is one of those settings where it's a little more difficult to show the effects of it. Now you'd think that having this set to off and cranking the details all to max, you'd be able to spot some differences pretty easily. Well, I tried that at 4K on a 4090 GPU, and I'll let you be the judge if you can see much of a difference. There's definitely a performance hit between the two settings. You can see it in the benchmarks results, but try and spot the differences in the video. Feel free to tell me what I missed because I don't see much here in the benchmark, at least. Shadow quality. There's four options, low, medium, high, and ultra. This setting changes the clarity of the shadows cast from cars and objects and does not require a track restart to apply these changes. With this setting on ultra, shadows will have more detail and the resolution of the textures appear higher. As you lower this setting, you can see the shadows become softer and less detail from the object is shown in the shadow. You can see it on the tree shadow to the right. Ultra is the most detailed and it gets more of a blur as the quality goes down. This setting has a minor effect on the shadows cast from your car as well. Ultra shadows from objects like trees are nice, but I almost feel like the shadows from your car feel more realistic on a medium or lower setting as they have a softer appearance, which I feel kind of more accurately represents the real world. I'll still use ultra due to the extra details in the shadows from other objects. Cube map reflection quality. There's four options, low, medium, high, and ultra. Cube mapping is basically a technique for showing reflections of scenery onto objects. The option specifically states that it sets the cube map reflections on cars. So my understanding of this setting is things like the hood of the car and the environment that's being reflected by it should be controlled by these settings. But looking at the hood reflection or anything environmental that reflects off the car, I can't see any difference between the ultra or low setting. If I had to guess what level of detail I was seeing, I'd say it was stuck on ultra. Now I'm not sure if this is a bug setting or if I just haven't been able to capture what's in the cube maps properly, but I've lined up many cars among all kinds of environmental objects and tried to see any changes and I can't see anything changing. I don't know if it's stuck on auto and detecting the 3080 Ti or 4090 and just locking it to ultra car model quality. This is another setting where I can't work out what it does. I spent hours taking captures of cars from all angles across all of the settings and the player car does not change one little bit between any of these settings. I tested with the benchmark and there's a 4 FPS drop in the benchmark when you go from low to ultra, which seems a little wrong because there's 24 cars in the benchmark. And I feel like there should be a much bigger FPS hit by changing from low to ultra on 24 cars. Not sure if it's bugged or I just couldn't work out what it was changing, but I took many shots of cars at the start line in the exact same spot on different settings and the car inside and out is exactly the same. My cars in game don't exactly look bad, so maybe it's bugged and stuck on auto and it's been set to high or ultra, I'm not sure. Car library detail has four options, low, medium, high, and ultra. You don't need to exit the track and re-enter for this setting to take effect. This setting changes the resolution of the car libraries or the decals. The best way to show this is through the car showcase screen. You can see the differences pretty clearly. The results are the same in game on your car, but it's less noticeable when it's in the game as the car is further away. Take note of the jagged edges on some of the colors. Windshield reflection quality. This has four options, low, medium, high, and ultra. You don't need to exit the track and re-enter for this setting to take effect. This setting controls the quality of the reflections you see on the windshield from inside the car view, and probably outside as well. 
Things like the dashboard reflections. It's a subtle effect, but the quality difference between ultra and low is fairly significant. There's a lot more jagged edges on low. It's easy to understand this setting by comparing ultra to low. Take note of the areas the green arrows point out. The white reflection has a lower resolution and there's a black object reflecting in the window that you can see a difference with as well. You can also see the dash reflection in this example is a lower resolution. I'd say avoid low for this one if you can. The difference between medium and ultra is not that noticeable. Mirror quality. There's four options, low, medium, high, and ultra. This setting says it controls the resolution, detail, and refresh rate of images seen through the reflection of rear view mirrors. The main thing you'll notice is the quality and the amount of objects that appear in the side and rear view mirrors. If you look at ultra, you can see there's a person, trees, and the top of a van in the mirror. The fence is also visible even if it's low resolution. On high, the van, the trees, and the fence are mostly gone. On medium, the person is also gone, and there doesn't really appear to be much difference between medium and low. In the next example, I zoom the mirror to 150%. You can see just how low the resolution in the mirrors actually are, even when the game's rendered at 4K. Comparing ultra to high, you can see high loses some trees in the background, medium loses all of the crowd, and low looks pretty much the same as medium. You'll see the same differences in the side mirrors of the car. Track texture quality has three options, low, medium, and high. This setting controls the quality of some, but not all textures around the track, and the draw distance quality for some things. It's difficult to spot any differences between high and medium, but there are some subtle differences, mainly focusing around objects that are far away and their quality. There are very visible differences between medium and low. Some textures look really bad on the low setting, and various objects in the distance are drawn at a really low quality. A lot of objects will draw clearer as they become closer. If you can, you really want to use medium as a minimum for this setting. Note the green arrows pointing out a few things that are different with the scene. The wire on the left fence, wire missing from the red door, circuit banner low quality, trees in the distance, the flags. There's more, but this gives you an idea of what this setting does. Particle effects has four options, ultra, high, medium, and low. This setting usually controls particle effects for things like smoke, dust, rain effects and more. Generally you'll find that the higher settings will have more particles as an effect and as you go lower in quality the effects get less and less until they barely exist at all. However in this game this option seems to have no effect on these settings. I'm pretty sure this setting is either bugged or it's stuck on auto. If you look on screen now there should be a clear difference between these settings in the amount of smoke coming off the tires. Ultra versus low would generally see a lot more smoke on ultra and much less on low but there's no difference between all settings levels here. If I had to guess what settings being applied here, I'd say it's high or ultra. This is usually very easy to spot the difference between ultra and low. You can see the same effect here with the explosions on the left. I only compared ultra and low and there's no difference at all. There should be a very visible difference between these two settings for this effect but it's exactly the same. And finally, the benchmark, the misty spray coming off the road is also a particle effect. And again, there appears to be no difference between ultra and low. Especially in this scene, there should be significant differences as the mist is quite a heavy particle effect. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am here. I think this setting is stuck on probably ultra. Motion blur has three options high, low, and off. This setting adds a blur effect to the screen the faster you go. It's designed to give you an immersive feeling of speed the faster you go. Let's pause the video in a single frame so we can compare. This is the same location with each different setting option, and you can clearly see the differences. On top, if you look to the sides of the frame, you can see the crowds and trees have a significant amount of blur to them. With this setting on low, there's only a minor blurred effect, and when you turn it off on the bottom, there's no blur at all. This is really a subjective setting. Some people like the blur effect, others don't. Personally, I like the low setting. I find the high setting adds the effect a little too heavy, especially when you're ripping donuts and you're basically stationary. The blur effect gets applied quite heavy, and it just doesn't quite feel right to me. Lens flares. I'd love to show you lens flare differences, but I can't get a lens flare to trigger at all in this game. I tried many races at many times of the day in all different views, and I can't get a single lens flare to show on ultra or low. If anyone knows a track, time of day, and whether that I can reproduce a lens flare, please let me know. So that rounds up this look into the graphics settings. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and feel free to sub to the channel. 
There's a few settings where the information is missing. I suspect there's something buggy going on with a few of them. If it turns out it is bugged and it does get fixed, I'll do another companion video to go with this one explaining the settings that are missing. I'm happy to be corrected on anything, so if I made any mistakes or you have any additional info to add, feel free. It's a fun game, but you really need a force feedback wheel to get the full enjoyment out of it. I'll probably do a benchmark video as well in the coming days, so keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you all next time.